Okay, so let's uh, admit everyone to the meeting room now. Hello, good morning. Good morning and welcome. Uh, we're still waiting for uh, more people to connect. So just a few moments of patience. Okay, so seems to be uh, almost everybody had a chance to join. Uh, good morning. Uh, very good morning to uh, to everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests. Uh, welcome to this webinar of the Common Fund for Commodities uh, regarding the open call for proposals. Uh, we will start with brief introductions. Uh, my name is Andrei Kuleshov. I am uh, the Chief of Strategy and Development of the Common Fund for Commodities. And uh, here with me, uh, we have my colleague, Mr. Nikolaus Krome, who is the Chief Operations Officer of the CFC. Uh, also, uh, some of uh, our colleagues are in the background uh, monitoring the virtual meeting room. Uh, just my apologies. Uh, so, uh, now, we will take one hour today to go through the open call for proposals. And uh, first, a brief uh, technical note that uh, if the broadcast, for whatever reason, is interrupted, uh, if you lose the connection or something, uh, please just log in with the same credentials in a few minutes, and it will be okay. This uh, this session is being recorded also, so if you miss anything, you will be able to watch the recording afterwards. Uh, also, it is easier for us to uh, monitor and to respond to questions which come in the chat box, so please use it. But also uh, feel free, if necessary, you can uh, raise your flag either on the screen by waving at us or by using the uh, raise flag function in the Zoom. Uh, should be familiar to everybody by now. Uh, and ask your question. Uh, please uh, do keep your uh, microphone uh, muted when you're not speaking. So, uh, so uh, we can keep the uh, noise level in the virtual meeting room uh, to the minimum. Uh, I now see two hands raised, raised already. So, if uh, if this is uh, testing, then you can uh, lower your virtual hand, your flag. If you would like to speak, uh, then please uh, take the microphone and ask a question. Okay, so hello. that was, yes, hello. hello. Yes, I'm hello. Rhoda. Yes, from welcome. Kenya, from Kenya. And send a proposal to be supported in building a church. Will this be helpful to us? Yes, sir. Waiting mm. for your answer. 
uh, we will not be able to judge uh, any proposal uh, by voice. So any proposal made to the CFC, any request for financing made to the CFC needs to come in by completing the application form. We cannot answer, uh, we cannot evaluate the proposal simply by voice uh, or simply by uh, looking at the title. So we have to see a complete uh, application form to be able to assess if a proposal is eligible. And now we are going to explain which specific proposals the CFC is looking for and how to complete the application form. So please do bear with us and we will explain how. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, then we are going to proceed. And uh, first, a few words about the Common Fund for Commodities, uh, since the organization is not widely known. Uh, some clarifications are in order. So uh, the CFC, it's an international financing institution. So it is an organization established by uh, member countries, owned by member countries. Uh, we have started operations in 1989, so some 33 plus years ago. Uh, 101 member countries uh, plus uh, some institutional members, organizations, members of the CFC includes the European Union, the African Union, Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Southern African Development Community, West African Economic and Monetary Union, Caribbean Group of States, and East African Community and the Andean Community. Uh, the CFC has a uh, technical competence in the commodity sector. Over the years of its existence, uh, the CFC has financed uh, almost five, 500 uh, commodity value chain projects. Uh, in 2014, the Common Fund has undergone a deep reform, uh, becoming fully a uh, committed impact investor. Um, we have uh, uh, had operations is in almost 100 countries, so we have extensive experience uh, geographically. Also. Uh, our activities need to be implemented in member countries. So uh, in most member countries, we had activities at uh, various stages. Uh, currently, the outstanding portfolio of the CFC is on the scale of 50 million. Uh, our annual commitments uh, reach um, about 12 to $15 million per year. Uh, the focus of the common funds uh, is on commodity sector. And the reason for this focus is that uh, commodity dependence is evaluated as the root of poverty for billions of people worldwide. Uh, the commonly uh, known estimate is about 2 billion people worldwide who depend for a significant part of their livelihoods on production and trades of primary commodities. The CFC looks at uh, specific uh, issues that connect uh, poverty and vulnerability to commodity dependence and uh, in any instruments uh, that can be used to address and to reduce commodity dependence and associated poverty, including uh, issues like the green recovery, enhancing uh, food security, uh, transforming agriculture towards greater sustainability, uh, going towards uh, regenerative agriculture, uh, addressing uh, gender inequalities, uh, uh, looking for uh, uh, new technologies, uh, digital innovation, and in general, anything to do with innovation and creativity. Uh, because commodity value chains typically involve uh, multiple stakeholders, also the CFC, welcomes uh, proposals where uh, multi-stakeholder collaborations uh, are present uh, for the sake of, uh, of finding a workable solution in the commodity sector in, in addressing the uh, issues uh, that creates poverty in commodity value chains. 
the vision and mission statements of the CFC are in front of you now. So uh, the CFC aims uh, to transform uh, agricultural, mainly agricultural commodity sector, to make it a major contributor to alleviating poverty in commodity dependent countries. And uh, we do this by uh, strengthening the income generating uh, potential of the commodity sector so that it's not so much the CFC money that makes the difference, but it's the added income generated from the commodity sector that needs to be directed in the interest of the poor, of the poor people who depend on production and trade in commodities, so that com commodity value chains and the commodity sector can make it fair contribution to uh, promoting sustainable developments in the country's concerns. So uh, the main instruments uh, for the CFC, the only instruments for the CFC to uh, receive project proposals is through the open call. And uh, when, whenever I'm saying uh, project proposals, uh, we mean uh, investment proposals. The CFC works by investing uh, its uh, money, its funds, into uh, propositions, into uh, projects, which are recoverable and which can generate sustainable value. Uh, all the proposals coming through the open call, uh, there will be a calendar on the screen in a few slides later, but basically twice a year, we have a deadline and all the project uh, proposals, all the investment proposals received before this deadline uh, will uh, follow uh, the process of consideration in the CFC. The process is in front of you on the screen. So uh, the next deadline, uh, Nicholas, correct me if, I wrong, I, if I'm wrong, is about a month from now in the middle of April. So all the proposals that we uh, receive uh, by middle of April will first be uh, read by somebody in the Secretariat. So, so somebody in the CFC will uh, read the application form and will complete a certain checklist to make sure that the proposal meets the minimum condition uh, qualifying it for consideration by the CFC. Based on this, uh, selected or qualifying proposals will be prepared for consideration by the consultative committee of the CFC. Now, uh, the consultative committee is a group of nine independent experts appointed by the executive board of the CFC. And their task is to evaluate the technical feasibility of the proposal. So uh, let's, let's say you make a proposal about macadamia or cocoa or coffee or, so, or some other commodity. There will be somebody in the consultative committee who has uh, experience in this commodity, they would, they would evaluate uh, the proposal in terms of its technical uh, feasibility. Uh, if the consultative committee finds that the project proposal is uh, technically feasible and suitable for the CFC, the committee will make a number of recommendations on what the proposal needs to do to be uh, eligible for CFC financing, uh, the CFC Secretariat will uh, come back to clarify any outstanding questions. And uh, if all the outstanding questions can be answered, if uh, the investment proposal is accepted uh, by, by the proponents, then we will uh, present it to the executive board and the executive board will make final decision on whether the CFC is prepared to offer financing uh, to this particular project. Uh, in principle, uh, the CFC will work on the basis of the information provided to us in the application form. If something is not clear, if we want some additional information during the whole process, we will come back to you and we will ask uh, to respond uh, to the to these questions to provide some clarifications etc sorry so, for disturbing uh, you 
Uh, yes, please go go ahead. Yes. I see two, I see two flags up. Uh, so uh, if we need to uh, get yes. into questions, I'm so sorry. Uh, I am Iman from uh, Egypt, from Ms. Meda. Uh, I only have um, a very crucial uh, question um, in that um, we will take uh, these um, steps um, in a hard uh, in a hard copy. You can send it uh, via email or something or how we can reach all this significant information. Uh, if I understand the question correctly, it's about uh, uh, how, physically how to make an application. Uh, you can make an application by completing the application form that's downloadable from the CFC website. And you can send uh, any questions or the application form to the open call address of the Command Fund for Commodities. That's open call at common fund.org. And yes, so... uh, it's, it's, it's a real address. There's somebody who is monitoring this address. So uh, somebody will uh, respond. We uh, aim and we try to respond to all the questions that we receive on this open call email address. Yeah, so the, the proposed uh, application will, uh, will be on the CFC website. So we have to download it. That's correct. And then, yes. yeah, and then we have to fill it and and send it. Absolutely, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And I can see my colleagues uh, posted in the chat box. Uh, there is the internet address where you can download the application forms. So, uh, and what about the information and all these um, these selected criteria or something? Uh, did we receive it um, uh, in the email or um, how we can receive it? Uh, we will go through that uh, now. Uh, the presentation, I believe, we will circulate uh, by email to all uh, participants who registered for the webinar. Yeah, uh, yeah. On the... That's great. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And if uh, if we are already in the Q and A uh, session, I'll take one more question. There's a flag of uh, Ratibu Kakuza. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Mr. Andre. Yeah, I'm from Uganda. And work for an organization, educational Medicare Foundation. And so, what I wanted to ask is, uh, can you can you accept a proposal? Because you have a lot of land, and we want to build a community school, to provide the free education uh, to, the, to the vulnerable kids in the community. So, I was wondering. If for submitting that proposals, you can consider it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is my question. Uh, okay, uh, we will have to go through the rest of the presentation to answer this because the, the questions uh, will be answered in the course of the presentation. There is a very specific uh, set of financial instruments that the CFC offers. Grants is not one of those. The CFC cannot give uh, grants to investment projects for the reasons of sustainability, because the CFC needs to act as an uh, impact investor. And that means all financing that the CFC provides is recoverable. So that uh, uh, excludes, I would say, uh, most charity aid programs. The CFC is not this kind of organization that can provide charity financing. So uh, with your permission, uh, I would like uh, to proceed with the rest of the presentation, at least get through the financial instruments, because it's important, and that might actually answer uh, some of the questions that are waiting to be asked. We will provide some time for questions uh, once we have gone through the presentation. I uh, thank you for your patience. So uh, the first question then that I was trying to answer is what qualities are expected from a project to make it successful in consideration by the CFC? 
uh, do read the open call for proposals because there it actually says which kind of projects that the, the CFC is looking for. So the CFC objectives, the focus on commodity value chain, the focus on impact investments, and the focus on uh, recoverable forms of financing are all uh, stated there in the documents. Also, there's instructions for completing the application form. Do have a look because uh, many of the questions are answered there already. Uh, the CFC does expect uh, to uh, see proposals from uh, organizations who, can, who have demonstrated their capacity to uh, manage operationally and financially the types of investments that uh, they are proposing. So we we'll look for the background, we we'll look for the track records that people can actually deliver what they promise. Uh, also, it helps immensely if the application form is completed clearly and concisely with clear information um, that makes it easier for us to understand what the project is proposing, what the investments is proposing. Uh, finally, uh, if any assumptions are made in the proposal, please clarify that, for example, you are assuming a certain uh, growth in a certain commodity sector and you propose to, uh, to take advantage of this growth opportunity. And a uh, financially sustainable business plan is always a great help for us to understand how the project is going to work. So uh, moving on, as I promised, uh, to the calendar of the current call for proposals. So uh, we expect to receive applications by 10th of April. That's just less than a month from now. <clears throat> uh, those applications, again, uh, per year, sometimes we receive a few hundred applications. So all those applications will be read by somebody in the CFC secretariat. The project manager will read the completed application form uh, between 10 April and the middle of May 2023. So if we have uh, if we have any questions, we will come back uh, to you uh, with uh, to to get some clarifications on the proposals. In June uh, this year, we will submit qualifying suitable proposals to our consultative committee, and in the first week of July, the consultative committee will review qualifying project proposals and will make its recommendation to the executive board. <clears throat> Uh, if the project has been recommended, then we will come back to you uh, to clarify any outstanding issues and prepare a submission for our executive board. And the executive board of the CFC will decide on CFC financial commitment to projects in October uh, 2023. We will come back to you uh, shortly after that to uh, proceed with the next steps if the project receives approval by the executive board of the CFC. <clears throat> Up to the executive board, all our consideration is based on the basis of the application form, on the basis of the information contained in the application form. Uh, if the executive board agrees to the proposal, then we will proceed to verify this information by uh, so somebody, uh, one of the CFC project managers will physically come to you, to, to the proposed project location, to verify the information contained in the application form, to check, to carry out uh, on-site uh, due diligence. Also, we will come back to you with the proposals on the legal documentation, on the legal terms of the agreement. And that uh, answers uh, one of the questions uh, that uh, frequently comes up, which types of organization can apply for CFC financing can request CFC investments. The answer is any organization can apply as long as the organization has a legal personality that allows the organization to sign a loan agreement with the CFC, to sign a financing agreement with the CFC. If the organization cannot sign an agreement, then obviously we cannot, uh, we will not be able to uh, conclude legal documentation and therefore will not be able to offer financing to the organization. That, that is uh, the only real uh, constraints. Uh, we do expect that all uh, projects start within 12 months 
after the executive board uh, has given its approval. Uh, if the project uh, fails to start uh, within a certain time, within uh, two years, within 24 months after board approval, then the sunset clause will apply and the CFC can withdraw its commitments to finance the project. So uh, typically, if the project did not start within two years, that basically means that it's uh, uh, the proponents have lost interest or that the business model is no longer operational and so on. So the CFC might redeploy the money uh, into another project that can use it uh, more effectively. <clears throat> So that's as far as the general information about the call for proposals is concerned. And I will now proceed uh, to the details of the application form. So how to complete the application form that is, that is downloadable from the CFC website. <clears throat> so uh, first, uh, uh, there is also a note in the application form that the CFC does not charge any fees at the application stage. So if uh, if a consultant comes to you, you're welcome to use the services of a consultant in completing the application form. <clears throat> but the CFC itself does not charge any fees. Uh, so it's if if somebody say, if some somebody says otherwise, this is not correct. Uh, we do expect complete and accurate information in the application form, as I said. All our work up to the executive board is based on the information contained in the application form. Uh, but after the executive board approves a project, we will come and we will verify that this information is correct. So it is appreciated that this uh, information needs to be complete and accurate. It helps us uh, provide uh, appropriate form of financial support to qualifying projects. Uh, because of the large volume of applications that we receive, we will only be able to uh, exchange emails and correspond and continue our conversation by email uh, with regard to projects that are receiving follow-up. So if the project has not been selected in the consultative committee or the executive board, we will not be able to continue our correspondence on this project but uh, you can uh, reapply. You can always uh, resubmit the project as many times as necessary, uh, making improvements and making uh, changes to the project to meet the CFC requirements better. Uh, the CFC does have a list of activities that are excluded, which are the normal, uh, normal activities uh, under the Global Compact. You can uh, see them on the CFC website. Also, uh, a significant point uh, regarding confidentiality. If uh, the project proposal, if the investment proposal contains uh, any uh, sensitive or confidential information, the information that should not be shared, please indicate this clearly. Uh, for the purpose of uh, giving the proposal accurate consideration, we will make uh, the application form available to our decision-making bodies, to the consultative committee and to the executive board. So if uh, you would not like some information to be seen by people outside the CFC secretariat, please indicate it very clearly on the application form that certain information is to be considered confidential. And the general email address is on the screen in front of you. So uh, again, this is a real email address. Somebody is watching it. So if you have a question, do send your question to this email address. Also, completed application form can be sent to this email address, and it will be acknowledged that we received it. So uh, that concludes the uh, introductory part of the application form. <clears throat> And then we go to uh, some details regarding the organization, regarding, uh, regarding who, e who is the organization requesting uh, the financing from the CFC. <clears throat> so uh, this uh, should be self-explanatory. You see uh, the details on the screen. You will see the same sections in the application form. <clears throat> Please indicate uh, the type of the organization, as, as, I, as I mentioned already, 
there are no specific restrictions on the types of the organization uh, that applies to the CFC for financing. But uh, you need to make sure that uh, that we uh, we understand the type of your organization and that the organization has a legal personality to be able to conclude an agreement on financing with the CFC. We need the information about the founders of the company of, or the organization who owns it, who set it up, who uh, what is the governance of the organization, who makes the decision, and uh, the uh, formal registration information about your organization in the country where you operate. Uh, also, uh, the location of the target markets and a brief <clears throat> a brief summary of uh, the financing objectives. So what the CFC financing is going to be used for is also essential for us to understand the nature of the investment proposal. So <clears throat> this uh, does not have to be long, but it needs to be clear so we can understand you better. <clears throat> And uh, I am going to pass on to the next section of the application form, and that is request for financing, uh, where I would like to invite uh, Nicholas Kromer, the Chief Operations Officer of the CFC, to uh, provide you the explanations. Thank you, Andre. Also a good day um, from my side. I will take over the next few chapters. What you see here is the chapter headline of uh, chapter two of the proposal template. And before I go into any individual loan products that can be requested by the CFC, here are a few general things. Uh, the CFC uh, does not, financing should not exceed 50% yeah, of all of a specific undertaking. That means that uh, um, uh, we would like to see that there is certain co-finance. Uh, so these sources can be other loans, it can be grants, it can be equity or retained earnings. There, I think uh, you, you can be quite open and, and free, but we, we want to have some co-financing and it needs to show in the financial statements. Otherwise, it's not acceptable. Our loan terms are quite long. They can go from three to five years. In exceptional cases, they can go up to seven years. I'll come to that in a minute. The key question of interest rates. Uh, uh, the interest rates are usually determined based on the or the base rate of the interest rate that is being constructed is usually the US dollar bond rate that is uh, from bonds that are issued from the country in which the project are being executed. And then we do a risk markup onto it. Now, that's the usual way we triangulate with the market rates. They are usually on the far lower end of the market rates. And uh, uh, for your information, usually when both parties really want to do the loan, we come to an agreement. As a guiding principle, these uh, um, uh, interest rates at the moment are between 5 and 12%, 12 sometimes higher, sometimes lower. Equity financing is within our mandate, but we do only do it in exceptional cases. So if we move to the next slide, you will see the forms of financing. Uh, and here you see our main loan products right from the start on, on the top you see term loans now this is a classic product that we provide for capex investments uh, if you want to buy a, a truck if you want to Im Im increase or improve your production capacity uh, of an oil mill or you want to expand your cocoa plantation that's the right product to go for terms usually three to five years if you actually grow perennial crops that means if you want to get or expand into farming we even go up to seven years and sometimes we even give a grace period but that is in very rare cases these loans are always tailored because we understand the agriculture market we understand agricultural cash and term loans are usually secured um, with collateral or other securities um, we do secure loans but we don't over secure you it's not like that we take everything that you have but it's really adequate Below that, you find trade finance. Now, that is our most popular product. Uh, that is from pure trade finance that we do against shipment documentations when it, the, the uh, uh, products are on board, but they can extend to, and in most cases, uh, this is the case to the point where a company needs to go out or needs cash in order to go and purchase raw material at the beginning of a season. Yeah. Uh, that is usually done. We we do that against purchase orders with tripartite agreements, and we finance the period actually from the day where the 
the say cashew or macadamia nut is being purchased until the retailer or the trader uh, uh, in the US or in Europe actually pays back. The longer that cash cycle is, also when we slide into working capital, we might ask you for a guarantee or something, but usually th this is uh, uh, with very light requirements when it comes to securities. An example of that is if, if you uh, want to uh, sell avocado oil to Kenya, you first have to go and buy the avocados, then you have to process them, then they are being shipped from Kenya to Europe, and then the retailer in Europe takes another 60 days until he or she pays. Um, below that, you find equity stake. As I said, so far, we have not invested in equity into single companies uh, it, because it simply absorb, absorbs too much capacity. What we, okay, what we occasionally do is that we invest in other agricultural themed impact investment funds. If there is an interesting proposition, we always listen, but our portfolio on that is relatively small. Then you see development impact bonds. Now, that is of great strategic importance to us. Now, what does it mean? If you happen to be an NGO with a great project proposal in the agriculture value chain for technical assistance, uh, and you have a sponsor that, uh, however, would only like to pay after the results have been delivered and according to the results that have been delivered, then we would be or we are interested in becoming the party that pre-finances you, take your performance risk, and actually uh, uh, then uh, get the money or being paid from the end sponsor when the deliverables have been delivered against some external audit. We believe that this model has a future because sponsors do no longer have to pay out in advance against the claim that might materialize, but might not. And, and there is a, a link on the online application with an example. So if you think you have something like this, we would be specifically interested. On the bottom of the page, you see fast track financing. Uh, these are proposals with a smaller ticket size that can be submitted under our fast track procedure. That in rare cases can even be a grant or a returnable grant. But please note that in recent years, the success rate of that has been very limited. Project must be highly innovative. They must be of strategic, strategic importance for the CFC and have some substantial additionality. Okay, if we move to the next slide then, this is basically a screenshot uh, um, where you have to fill in what kind of loan on the left side you would like to have, trade finance or, or a working capital secured against inventory or a term loan, what the amount is that you would seek, very, very keywords, use of funds, the tenor, and then provide some indication what kind of collateral you could provide. If we move to the next slide, you see the same thing on equity stakes. Also here, we would like to know, is it a development impact bond? Is it equity? And then you see that we take a maximum share of 49%. Usually it's much, much smaller when we invest into impact investing funds. The next slide, order of completion, the same thing is for fast track financing. Then we come to the next chapter on the next slide, chapter three, management and operations. Now, uh, what do we want to know here? Under Chapter 3.1, we want to know who are the shareholders and how is the ownership uh, structured? Are there any other ultimate beneficiary owners that we should know about? Is the company part of a holding company with sister companies? And then we would like to have the context. Is there a board? And then we would like to know who sits on the board. Yeah, Who are the key persons? Uh, who is running the company? What do they bring to the table? Is Are there complementary skills and expertise? And in that context, if you happen to have CVs of the key persons, then please provide them. Under 3.2, we would like to know what the current actual business model is that, that you are following. Yeah? And this is where many proponents have difficulties. Please expect that we know nothing about your company. So you really have to start with the basics. Say that we are company X and we provide or we produce and process these products uh, Y for export to countries X, Y, and Z. It's really that simple, but this is where you please have to start. And then we would like to know where you source from, what processing steps you are doing, uh, when have you been established, where are you located, who are your target customers, employees, sales, production volumes, and capacity for production processing. Really the key figures that we would like to know, the basics. The goal is 
that the reader, that's us, has a good and high level understanding what you do, how you do it, and at what size level. And in many proposals, we do find it difficult to interpret the business case yeah? and, and with whom we are dealing. It does not need to be long, but please be concise and please provide quantitative numbers, figures when you have them. On the next slide, this is the next chapter of, of the uh, template proposal, market opportunity. So here we would like to know what is around your business and how do you does your business fit in there? We want to know in what market or industry you are. Is it a very competitive industry and with a lot of pressure or are you differentiated or your business is differentiated to an extent that you fill a niche? Do you compete in, on price? Do you compete on quality or do you not compete at all because you have some unique selling proposition or points of your product? Do you have more than one product and what's your main revenue generator? These are the questions that we would like to know under 4.1. A key information that we want to know is how you currently secure your supply. Is it from smallholders? Is it from spot market? Or do you supply, secure your supply with longer term contracts? Are you even integrated backwards and in that you have your own farms? That is of great interest to us because this is usually where the social impact lies. And ultimately, the CFC seeks to support social and environmental impact with our funding. Then, who are your main off-takers and how do you market it? How do you ship? What's your relationship to those off-takers long-term or at arm's length? We want to know. What are the barriers of entry into your market? It determines competition, I said that before. Who are your main competitors? Please provide the names and also the size indications if you do. And under 4.1 is also uh, the place where you put any other macroeconomic or macro level information that, that is relevant. Yeah? Are there any legal issues in this sector, environmental issues, political or tech issues? Yeah? Does the industry, for example, in which you, in which you are active, uh, expect any game changers yeah or is there going to be a law that will prohibit exports a, a new technology that will make older technologies obsolete that is what we would like to know under chapter 4.2 uh, is a chapter where we would like you to express in a few sentences what makes you better than your competitors so you can really dash it up yeah where do you see your strength be it in your staff, be it in your efficiency, that you have a unique product, price leadership, customer relations, let us know. We would really like to know. And under 4.3, we would really like to know an honest opinion, where are your weaknesses? Yeah, We'll ask in the proposal where you see your weakest points. And where do you see do you need to do better and try to work out any relationship to your proposal for, 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 for funding here? Yeah. Maybe there is the reason for funding why you want to do better in some way. So be honest, we can take it. Next slide then is we move to the future. And under four, we would like to know, okay, what is the status? And in five, we want to know what is it that you want to do based on what you have described in the previous chapter or your business is right now. Kindly elaborate what your plans are with CFC funding and where you see your model there. How will your business look like after you have invested CFC funding? Where will the effects be? What changes will take place? Will you, for example, vertically integrate? Will you incre increase your production, your productivity? Will you increase your capacity? Will you diversify? Yeah, these are the. Will you go into other countries, better quality? That is what we would like to know. Under 5.2, we would like to know how your customer base, if at all, and if so, how your customer base is going to change. Will you attract new customers? Will you enter new markets with new products? Or will you just deepen the market that you are in already? Yeah? Will there be a change in distribution channels? Yeah? Will you turn from informal to formal markets, different export countries? These are the these are the informations that we would like to know. One very key information is what currency will you be selling it? That is very important for us. 5.3, same as the supply side. We would like to know what is it that you require from raw materials or whatever to operate and how will you secure an assumed higher supply requirements because you have now invested. Will you diversify your sourcing? Will you engage with outgrowers, import? Uh, will you substitute? Does that 
make you prone to any more risks? Yeah. How will you structure your supply? Will it be at arm's length? Will it be spot trade? Will it be long-term contracts? Organized supply chain, disorganized supply chain? How is pricing of this? And are you getting the supply locally or from the world market? These are questions that we would like to know. Five, four. We would like to know about any changes in the production and processing process when you uh, receive CFC funding. The perspective is, do you add additional value through adding or improving processing steps? Are you becoming traceable or, or organically certified? That's interesting for us. The another aspect is what's going to change. Will you need more or different skilled staff? Are you engaging into any new technology where you need to be trained? Is there a risk of failure for that technology? And one simple question, do you have access to sufficient electricity and water, for example? Under 5.5, five, under that chapter, finally, we would like you to, to write down and we would like to know if you plan to apply any innovation alongside the new investment. Yeah? Will you introduce blockchain? Will you start to engage uh, 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 with carbon certificate training, renewable energy? Will you become traceable, organic? Yeah, Or even it could be less spectacular that you say, okay, I'm going to be the first company that's going to grow and trade peanuts in, in, in a country. Yeah. Uh, so you develop a new industry. Think about it and write it down. Anything counts. So to summarize, and before we come to the next chapter on, on development impact, uh, uh, I would like just a few general words. Kindly be as concise and as possible and try to underline your information with quantitative figures if you have. Yields, production level, staff, these are the figures uh, that we would like to know. Please try to avoid what we would call fogging yeah, and, and data and information dumping. It's not about uh, writing or supplying us with all the information that you have. It is with supplying us with an idea of how your business runs and will run in the future. And please note that we are fully aware that no business in this world is perfect, especially when you are in the agriculture circle. So don't be afraid on self-highlighting your deficiencies and the possible risks that your business is exposed to. We can handle that. And for the proposal stage, we need to get a clear high-level picture on your business to see if the business can be sustainable. That is the basis for any development impact, which then becomes sustainable impact. So please take that into account. Yeah, I think I'll hand over now to my colleague, Andre, who will talk a little bit about what we would like to know about development in Pesh. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. And I'm fully aware of the time pressure that's ticking. So on development impacts, I have a number of slides covering those uh, uh, subsections uh, 6, 1, 6, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, the CFC is an impact investor, so any investment that we financially support is expected to deliver clear de development impact. There is impact that improves the well-being of people involved in the commodity value chains in a sustainable way. Uh, we operate in the context of sustainable development goals. Uh, there are six uh, core sustainable development goals, and you will see in the application form our request to clarify how the proposed project will impact uh, those sustainable development goals. Uh, starting, uh, starting with the poverty profile of the uh, target beneficiaries of the project, we want to understand which people are going to experience the improvement in the livelihoods as the result of this project. Uh, any publicly available information, maybe you have data on poverty in particular region of the country or in general or at the country level, uh, any specific vulnerable groups affected by the project and so on, we need to understand how the project is going to change lives. The CFC runs a fairly detailed uh, system for managing environmental and social risks. So uh, please provide the information about your assessments of the environmental and social impact of the project. And somebody in the CFC office will review this information. And if the project is successful, then we'll come back with the detailed questionnaire to assess 
the uh, management of environmental and social risks. Now, uh, moving on. So, uh, all the impact needs to be measured in specific terms, not in abstract words. So uh, do please provide some indicators. Well, also we understand that nobody is perfect, that there is no such thing as perfect information on impact of any particular activity. Uh, it's a uh, rapidly developing field, but do provide, for example, that, that uh, salaries paid to employees will be 30% higher as the result of this project or that the primary the producers that the smallholder farmers you're buying certain produce from will be able to earn high income that's coming from a premium market and so on uh, there is a system of impact indicators known as uh, iris plus which uh, you can up, uh, access uh, on the internet on the address uh, shown on the screen uh, do have a look there are certain suggestions in the application form of IRIS Plus indicators that a typical small and medium enterprise is able to report without too much difficulty. So do please indicate whatever impact indicators you think will best reflect uh, how the project is going to change lives. So uh, moving on uh, to the financial performance. Nicholas, I don't know, do if we need to go through the uh, uh, through the very financial... quickly. Uh, in yeah. principle, these are standard financial statements. They are included with the application form. So, statements of uh, the financial performance of your company for the last three years, and projecting it into the future, how this will change as the result of the project. So a uh, financial model is downloadable from the CFC website together with the application form. Download the spreadsheet, fill in the data that you have and be honest so that we can understand how, uh, how uh, the proposed project will change the financial performance of your company. Same thing goes for the balance sheet. Uh, uh, moving on to the next uh, section eight, uh, supporting documents and checklist. So uh, there is a checklist in the application form. Please provide supplementary documents. That is, uh, for example, registration records, the information about the key individuals in the company. If you have, well, you are expected to have uh, audited financial statements for the past three years, please, please include those and any other information that will help us to understand the organization, like uh, the business plan, the management, the organization chart, and so on. So uh, that's uh, really the last sections of the application from the key details of the organization, just a summary business card of uh, who you are. And finally, you need to sign the application form and you need to certify all of the questions uh, that you see on the screen that you are authorized to act on, beca on behalf of the organization, that there's no legal case against your organization currently pending in court, that all the information is true, complete, and accurate, and so on. So uh, that uh, concludes the formal part of the presentation that we have. Uh, there was a number of questions in the chat box. So uh, all the questions regarding if whether a country is eligible, uh, to receive financing from the CFC. The list of the CFC member countries is on the website. The address is in the chat box. Please access. I can say that uh, Chad, Kenya, Rwanda, uh, Tanzania, uh, what else was there? Uh, they're all members of the CFC. The only non-member country that was in the chat box was uh, South Sudan. South Sudan is not currently a member country of the CFC. Maybe it will change in the future, but currently uh, South Sudan is not eligible to receive CFC financing. Also, Cameroon is, is a member country of the CFC. Uh, so uh, can we uh, now ask the question first uh, hand up was uh, Hosi Ejeji. Uh, please go ahead. Hello, um, good morning. Good morning. I'm Kosi and I'm from Nigeria and I work for a dairy company 
called CHAM. And my question around the financing is, because there's been a lot of mention about financing projects, et cetera. So I was wondering if financing also can be applied for, for um, our operations. So does uh, the CFC fund the operations of um, a private organization that's also impact focused? No, a quick answer in principle, it, it, it proved the answer is probably yes, but we need to see the details of the proposal to be able to uh, to give a more substantial item. So again, we need to see the completed application form to say whether something is uh, suitable or not suitable for the CFC. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, now, next question, I believe, came from uh, uh, Prudence Atipoe. Uh, thank you sir, for a wonderful presentation. Um, my question is in two folds. The first is, can a company who is uh, established less than three years apply for this fund? Because you said it has to show a financial uh, report for the last three years. Um, that's my first question. The second one is, if you are a small company, you are not yet exporting your product, but you are selling internally in the country, but <laughs> your main purpose is for you to export. Um, is this also, can this, uh, apply or for that matter, is it eligible for this funding? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. So uh, I I would ask Nikolaus to respond to that. I think. Uh... Thank you. As a as a rule of thumb, the three years stand. Uh, if you have a compelling business case or can explain uh, why uh, why your business uh, is already stable and and has a certain size. Uh, after two years, uh, then you, you are obviously invited to submit. And it is true what you've said. Uh, we are uh, providing loans in foreign currency, that is EU or US dollars. And uh, we would really like to see also to safeguard the company itself that they are Euro or US dollars uh, uh, cash income stream in order to make sure that this loan can be paid back. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, then I I would read a few questions from the chat box. Uh, so the question whether Uganda, yes, Uganda is a member of the CFC. How are the funds recovered? Uh, the funds will need to be paid back to the CFC in the currency in which the funds were provided. Uh, there was a question about uh, the percentages, the interest rates that Nikolaus will have a chance to answer in just a moment. Uh, whether the CFC does unsecured funding to banks, also uh, Nicolaus may be able to answer that. Uh, any guarantee of the organizations in Uganda? Uh, I believe uh, you can ask this question uh, by sending us an email because uh, it needs further clarifications that what is understood there. Uh, microfinance uh, company dealing with small-scale farmers, uh, whether it's allowed to apply for loans. In principle, the answer is yes, uh, provided that the size, the nature of the uh, financing requesting, etc., is in line with the requirements of the CFC. Uh, can a company submit multiple applications? The answer is yes, there is no uh, restriction. Cameroon is a member of the CFC. Uh, can the funds uh, be made available to companies which only sell locally? I believe also Nikolaus has the answer to that. So Nikolaus, the interest rates, uh, the companies selling locally, whether it can get financing and can we provide unsecured financing for banks? Okay. Um, yeah. The the last question, unsecured uh, finance for, for banks, it, it's it's too unspecific. We would need to see the case. If it's a compelling case, okay. We look at every and we read every case and we make a note on it. Yeah. So that that's uh, that's too un, unspecific. Do we finance uh, uh, banks or microfinance banks in principle when when they uh, issue loans to uh, to the agri sector? In principle, yes. But we have little experience with it, yeah. Uh, so, but but we will of course take a look at it. 
Um, I think that, yeah, there was one more question about the interest rate. Again, I, I repeat that, that the interest rate uh, is being negotiated and based upon risk, our risk assessment, and based upon the um, government bond rate that is prevailing in the country where the activities take place. These are our guiding points. And from that, we are uh, we take this figure and then we look at the market, how the market rate is, and we usually end up at the lower end. What I would like to stress, though, however, that we believe it's our complete proposition of the term sheet that makes it attractive. And that is long term and is it's us having an understanding of the agriculture sector, of the seasonality, of the cash cycles uh, uh, and, and the likes. So, so we tailor each loan specifically. Did I miss something, Andre? uh no i think that's uh that's that did, did you answer about the local currency uh, yeah well <clears throat> local currency uh, 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 only in cases where where it, it uh the the uh the fluctuation or the currency exchange risk uh, it can be mitigated somehow otherwise i don't even think it's in the interest of the borrower that we do that yeah right okay so uh Let's get back to the uh, questions in the meeting in the virtual meeting room. The flags are raised. So the first one is uh, John Ezekiel. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank Please you. Uh, thank you for thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, good night from Papua New Guinea. Um, I am a youth youth dedicated uh, individual who. We registered an NGO called uh, Papua New Guinea Rural Development Incorporated, which kept uh, more than 80% of our rural population. Is. And um, we started in 2021, January 26. And uh, our work captured more than like commodity. We we are uh, working with uh, cocoa, coffee for rural farmers, and also we want to sell. But the idea is there, but to reach out and get license or send out to other countries, we don't have this opportunity because, as you know, different countries like have their own own way of uh, looking at small organizations like this to fund and assist. So our government is more focus on other agenda and then they are not looking at uh, small NGOs. So to be fair, we are interested in it, but a uh, few of your requirements is like, it is it is hard to get it uh, as a success story for us. So yeah, I just want to ask if, if there is any special consideration because um, we see there is a need and we do uh, our work locally making like volunteer job after graduating from university and then helping our um, unemployed youth mothers and um, i will have to intervene here sir so that we, we will not be able to listen to your case now in its entirety please ask yep. the question okay okay thank you uh yeah so are we eligible to apply because uh, we are not uh, um, more than three years that's my question Uh, it, it's it's difficult to, to reply uh, if you do if you can demonstrate background for more than three years in the past in a similar field of activity, then mm -hmm. we will consider we will consider all the application forms. It is difficult for us to say if uh, if by, right, right now by voice if uh, the proposal is eligible up front. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, yes. Uh, please, we have uh, more questions uh, from the virtual meeting room. Uh, so, uh, Mara uh, Janet Michelo, please go ahead. Thank you, Andre um, and Nicola. Nice to see you after Qatar. Um, I wanted to find out, we are an enterprise um, support organization that is working with um, business, um, basically thinking and accelerating them. And one of our pillars is access to finance. So this would be an ideal commodity for us. Um, but what I wanted to find out, typically in your past, what kind of um, 
organizations would you support in terms of their growth stage? Um, because we are a small to medium enterprise, um, a not for profit, but a social enterprise. And I wanted to find out like what would be like a winning case for us or what would increase our um, opportunity to access the loan facility for us to be able to capacitate and support um, the farmers that we are working with. Um, currently, we have over 49,000 farmers countrywide um, with um, potential to grow to 100,000 farmers by the end of the year, and this facility would be really, really useful for us. So I just wanted to find out typically what would look like a success um, you know, organization um, in terms of size, um, turnover, as well as um, capacity. We do have the audited reports for three years, but I just wanted to know what sort of companies you've worked with in the past and what would increase our chances of accessing this um, facility. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there are some cases uh, described on the CFC website. So these are these are companies where the CFC has invested in the past. Uh, so uh, for uh, the did what you give about your organization uh, sounds like it is perfectly eligible for CFC financing. So please do send us the application form so we can uh, be more specific about it. Uh, I would. Uh, then move on let's take another uh, uh 10 minutes uh so we're not too late uh, into then uh into uh extending the time of this meeting uh please eman mohammed please go ahead yes uh, first of all uh, thank you for the fruitful uh, presentation um, uh, you have already mentioned that um, CFC is seeking for um, uh, a 50 percent um, uh, co-finance. Uh, so uh, I need to know uh, the other 50 percent um, uh, is part is uh, is a loan from CFC and the other part um, you mean that the co-finance can be also money in terms of money? you will not accept uh, assets as you have mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Nicolas, uh, more about financing? It, the, the, the most appreciated and clear-cut case, if you say, okay, and, and we, we have a, a loan from another bank or other financing institution. However, I, I think between the lines, you can hear that, that you are invited to be creative in that sense yeah whether it be future cash flow or 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 something like that uh, uh yeah we are willing to read and to listen mm -hmm. thank you very much uh uh juanita nasuna uh, please go ahead we cannot hear you Okay, I think the question is off. Uh, Ariful Islam, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for giving me an uh, opportunity to ask a question. Uh, this is Ariful from Bangladesh. My question is, I have actually two questions. First is our company is uh, uh, in a packaging business. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, please you go ahead. Hear, right? We are in a packaging business for a long time, but recently we want to move the uh, hermetic bag, hermetic packaging solution uh, for the Bangladeshi market, which is a, a complete new thing in, in this virgin market. So it is going to help uh, the farmers uh, in the country wide. And uh, my question is, as we are uh, starting this project, uh, is a new new one. So. We, if we are, uh, if we can apply for this uh, CFC funding, so this is one set first question. Second question is, uh, if your, uh, uh, if, if this CFC is only funding that is returnable, or do you also have a grant, uh, which which can be uh, used uh, in the business but not returnable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yes, CFC financing must be returnable. Uh, the, the, C, the CFC grants are basically not accessible to private companies. 
and for the, for the rest of the case, uh, we need to see we need to see the application form to be able to answer in uh, in substance. Uh, the CFC has uh, a lot of flexibility uh, in uh, financing uh, all sorts of uh, innovative activities in the commodity value chain, but we need to see the details of the case. Okay, so in, in general, if I ask that uh, as we are uh, we we want this fund in a new project, but we have a long-term business in the similar field, so our financial statement should be. Uh, should be declared that the last three years financial statement for the other business we can show here, right? Uh, <clears throat> we will uh, we will uh, look into the case. In principle, uh, we do uh, follow the track records. If you have track record and similar activities, and you're starting a new undertaking in the same field. <clears throat> Understand. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And uh, uh, Gladius uh, Origbeni Oric, Oshinemi. We cannot hear you. Uh, Gladius Origbeni Oric, Oshinemi. Uh, the microphone you muted. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, my name is Gladys. I'm calling from Nigeria. Um, I work with um, America Nigeria Limited. Actually, I'm a business owner. But my question is, um, presently we are into export of raw cashew nuts to Asia and some other uh, countries. I want to ask, are raw products eligible for this loan? That's the first question. That's my first question. Then secondly, what constitutes an acceptable collateral for the CFC loan? I want to have an idea of what type of collateral uh, would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. I would invite. Uh, I would invite. Uh, thank you very much for the question. I would invite uh, Nicolas. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so glad to see. First question: uh, uh, raw cashew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, no problem. But uh, in uh, you need. Uh, we need to see that it is a a, a, a profitable business case. Mm -hmm. And with mm -hmm. that raw uh, cashew, uh, uh, we would need to see. Okay, is there any social or environmental impact that is uh, support worthy for mm -hmm. the CFC? Talking about collateral, it very much depends on what finance uh, you are looking for. If it's trade finance, it's probably going to be light. If we can organize it with uh, uh, tripartite offtake agreements, if you are okay. asking for a CAPEX loan, th then uh, uh, we need to look whether, whether you, you have a, a piece of land or, or, or there's some kind of real estate or, or, or anything else that we could have, at least partially, as, as a security. Depends. Thank you uh, for thank you for that. Uh, we uh, move on uh, then to Vincent Caetano. Please go ahead. Hi. Yes. Uh, good morning. You can hear me. Yes. Thanks. So yeah, I'm Vincent. I'm calling from Malawi, and um, uh, my question is: um, we we um, uh, putting up a special papers vehicle between two companies. Uh, so how would that work out? Would, I mean, in terms of uh, the historical financial statements and things like that, how would that work out? Uh, that, that, that's really my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicolas, can I, uh, can I invite you? Yeah, we, we would need to understand the case. Uh, uh, we, we would need to understand the reason why SPV has been established, uh, what the purpose of the SPV is, and then we need to see, uh, okay, what what is behind it. If if it's only for 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 uh, a dilution of risk or whatever, obviously we are also very cautious. So it's an individual case that we would need to look at. Okay. 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 Fine. So we have to explain that in the SPV. Yeah, we have to explain that in the application. I mean, yes, please. Okay. And try to be as clear yeah. and concise as possible so we can understand. Yeah. 
Okay, mm. fine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Juanita Nasuna, please go ahead. Thank you very much and thank you for the presentation. Um, my question is, um, I, I, I work with a number of women in business and they do a variety of products, um, agree as well as the other tradable products like uniforms, tailoring, etc. So my question was, uh, because most of them do not have like audit reports, they do not audit their businesses. Mm -hmm. Can we be considered um, as groups of women to, to ask for the loans? Can you consider groups of women in businesses and we have our products on board and, and see if we can get the loans? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, it is difficult uh, to be very specific about this. Uh, but uh, the, if the women's group is organized in a way that it can uh, have legal personality, and that means is able to sign an agreement with the CFC, in principle, this is possible. Uh, however, uh, it will depend on the detail of uh, how the CFC money can be used within this group what is the governance structure and so on, and how this money uh, would be recovered as the result of new business activities by this uh, women's group. So uh, one thing for sure that the group needs to be sufficiently organized and registered and have a legal personality. And for the rest, uh, the, we, we need to see the specific of the case if the answer to the first question is yes. Uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, then we have four, uh, four more, uh, three more questions uh, from the floor that that did not have a chance to be asked. So first, first goes to Irene. Please go ahead. Maybe I'm not pronouncing. <clears throat> apologies. Maybe I'm not pronouncing this correctly. Irene. We cannot hear you. Okay, in the interest of time, we move on to uh, Siris Dulal. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, please. So, no, something about uh, actually, it was a nice presentation. Thank you for the presentation. I had a few queries that. Uh, we are actually a public uh, agricultural company here in Nepal, and we have been exporting a few high-value products like honey. And uh, will that uh, experience be considered if uh, we are starting up a new product line that we could export? Uh, it sounds like the answer is yes, but uh, again, we will have to see the details. So like, uh, will that experience be considered that we are engaged in uh, such activities and uh, make make us eligible to apply for the project. If uh, if you do have existing uh, exports, then yeah. switching to new products or uh, developing a new product line sounds perfectly okay for the CFC. Okay, okay sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, non so easy. Please go ahead. Um, all right. Thanks, Andre. Um, for the opportunity. Um, I have two questions. One would be, um, so there's, there's an existing JV. Um, I'm, I'm calling from Nigeria, by the way. There's an ex mm -hmm. existing JV we set up um, with another entity in agriculture um, to um, build out a financial operations platform for exporters, right? Um, now, the interesting thing, like someone asked earlier, um, is that the JV or the entity itself doesn't have the required historical um, operational information, but the two entities who set up the JV have that historical operational information. Uh, so I um, would like to understand how best to go about the application. Um, the second question would be, as, as an ag tech um, outside of that entity, we also have interesting use cases that we think we can also 
put in an application for um, the CFC with. So um, mm -hmm. is that also allowed um, where we put in two different applications, one it has a JV and then the second one has just an existing entity doing stuff in agriculture and ag tech. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, again, it is uh, it is not possible for us to be uh, specific and clear whether it's eligible or not. We will need to see the details. It sounds like it is uh, perfectly workable, uh, but uh, we will have to see the com the uh, details uh, to be able to answer. All right. Thanks. Uh, thank you. So. Uh, I see the flag of uh, Kosi Ejeje up, uh, but you already had a chance to ask a question. So can I move to George Kwasi Agbinyeya? Uh, George Kwasi Agbinyega, uh, please go ahead. Okay, I uh, we cannot uh, we cannot hear you. Uh, okay, there is uh, two more questions uh, uh, that I will invite uh, from the floor. That uh, saw so Min, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Um, and uh, we are from Myanmar and underground association for making the handicraft association. So we are going to apply for the fast track loan in the application. My question is the is the co finance is the compulsory or not in the application? This is the first question. The second question: fast track loan can be non repeatable. It, it, it is the non repeatable. Uh, yeah, this is the, the second question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, we do require co financing also for fast track applications. Uh, also, we do expect uh, all the CFC financing to be repayable. So, it needs to be returned to the CFC once the project has been successfully completed. And I will invite the last question from the floor, Mustafa Rehan. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Andre. Um, I, my question is related to trade financing. I asked earlier in the chat, but to build on to the question, must I apply in March for it with all of the other call for proposals? Or can I uh, apply at a later time? Because the the trade financing, it, it comes in a cluster, a, a two month time period which it's still, it doesn't work with the time for the call for, for proposals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for the question. And uh, you, can, uh, you can apply uh, right away. We understand that trade financing is very specific to the business cycle. And typically you would get the approval uh, in principle from the CFC and then the uh, trade financing will be disbursed when required, when necessary, and it will be renewed with every cycle, with every I, business, business cycle. I would like to stress that, to stress that. that. Yeah, uh, please submit as early as possible. It takes some time. We need to understand your business, and then we can really ensure that it's there when you need it. Don't do it a day before you need it. <laughs> Thank you very much, the two of you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I still see uh, George Quasi Albiniega. Uh, please go ahead if you're still with us. We still cannot hear you. <clears throat> so we noted the questions in the chat box. Just to summarize, the list of CFC member countries is accessible on the CFC website. Uh, the application form and the instructions, please download them from the, from the website. <clears throat> the links uh, to the CFC social media, you can see them in the chat box. Please uh, connect to us. 
If you have any questions, uh, do email us on opencall at commonfund.org. And we will provide the copy of the presentation to everybody who signed up for today's webinar. Uh, that only leaves me to say thank you very much uh, for listening to us. And uh, do come back to us with the interesting project proposal. Thank you very much. And thank you uh, to my colleagues uh, for being with us a bit longer. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. The webinar is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you.